Welcome to Testing Configuration with Open Policy Agent. I'm Gareth Roshgrove. I'm currently the Director of Product Management at Sneak, as well as uh, the curator of the DevOps Weekly Newsletter. I'm also one of the maintainers of the Comtest project, which is part of Open Policy Agent. Uh, you can find me on the internet as Gareth R. Um, I thought I'd say hi before we kick the talk off. Um, I'll mainly be talking to slides and showing some demos. But it's nice to hopefully see who's talking behind there. In this talk, I'm going to talk about policy. What is policy? Why do we care? And I'll introduce the Open Policy Agent project too. I'm also going to talk about why is that relevant to a developer workflow? Why is that relevant in the context of cloud engineering? I'm going to touch on the importance of sharing, and then we'll round up with a few conclusions. OK, let's get the talk started. Why policy? Well, what do we mean when we say policy? Because it's definitely an overloaded term. Um, I'm fond of dictionaries, uh, aren't we all? Um, so uh, one says a set of ideas or, or a plan of what to do in particular situations that have been agreed to officially by a group of people, a business organization, government, or a political party. Um, obviously, we're not necessarily a government or a political party, though we might be. We're mainly around this agreement, an official agreement. So what might be some examples in the context of, I guess, software? And well, you might be saying, OK, all of our Go projects should be, have been updated to a specific version of Go. Obviously, it doesn't have to be Go, it doesn't have to be 113. But you might have a, a policy around keeping up to date with the versions of frameworks or compilers. Maybe it's cloud infrastructure. And you're saying, well, all of our EC2 instances should have tags showing which team owns them. Or maybe it's in the context of Docker files. Like we're saying, okay, none of them should be using latest. They should all be using shards, whatever it might be. These are all examples of policies. Maybe they're informally agreed and enforced. Maybe they're very official in your organization. Open Policy Agent is a, an attempt to really build a library to help service policy. And it provides a, the underlying components. I, I sort of think, it, think of it as it's really the sort of open source equivalent in a mature sense to the sort of half-baked policy engine we'd all make without really talking about it as an engine if we didn't have something like this. It can take uh, some data some policy and give you a response, give you an answer. Does this, does the data you're putting in match the policy? Um, it provides a declarative language called Rego that we'll show some examples of to sort of describe that policy in. And it's very much optimized for, I guess, modern data structures. Um, it's also now a, a cloud native uh, compute foundation, so CNCF uh, first class project. And there are a number of sub projects as well under that, one of which I'll talk about a bit later. Um, Confest is uh, a tool that originally started as something built on top of Open Policy Agent. We've recently moved this under the same project banner and into the CNCF. Um, and this really provides a, a more end user like command line interface. While Open provides a, a daemon and does provide a command line tool, Confess is very focused on end users. It's very focused on taking any sort of form of input in and providing outputs that are useful locally and, and in CI CD environments. Uh, Vincent, a uh, good friend of mine, uh, sort of describes Open Policy Agent in another way, and this definitely resonates with me. It's my new favorite hammer. Policy is abstract, is quite general. This is an advantage. This means we can apply it in lots of different places. Um, hopefully, we'll show you a number of examples throughout this talk. Here's one. Let's take a the sort of ubiquitous Kubernetes configuration file. Um, again, this doesn't have to be Kubernetes, but it will use that for this example. We can write a policy against that. Maybe we're saying that, um, in this case, uh, containers here must not run as root. Uh, 
we're skipping over some details, but really what we're saying here is uh, input is the document where, where un, is under test. Spec, template, spec, security context, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, is that path to, in this case, the runner's non-root flag. And what we're saying is this should not be true. Um, we're also saying this applies to deployments. Um, that's Rego. That's the policy language we're using to, in this case, deny something that matches it. Confdesk just provides you a nice command line tool to running that policy against arbitrary input files. So here we can do confdesk test, point it at deployment YAML file. And in this case, we're failing that policy and we're getting a clear uh, indication of that. We could send that file in via standard in, we could actually uh, address multiple files. Confdesk is quite powerful and provides that just good user experience over the top of the policies. Here, the policies have been automatically uh, picked up from the policy folder in there, but you could also point that anywhere else. And we can output that in different ways too. So maybe you prefer a sort of table view. Um, you can also output to JUnit XML or TAP for CI CD integration. We also have a, a JSON format if you're just doing some sort of glue integration or want to pass things out with JQ. Let's see a quick demo of that in action. We have lots of examples in the uh, Confess repository across a load of different sort of tools, a lot of them relevant to that sort of cloud space. Um, I showed a Kubernetes example there. So let's show a quick Docker example. Um, so here I have a Docker file fairly standard, nothing uh, overly clever about it. And I've got some policies. One of them is saying, okay, let's pass out the command instructions um, and look for from. Uh, we're then saying, well, actually, let's get the value of uh, the from instruction. And we're saying, well, does it contain anything from our deny list? In this case, our deny list just has open JDK. Um, and if we match all of those things, we're going to deny. So, confess test Docker file, and there we see we've we've got an unallowed image. We've got a banned image in our uh, Docker file. So if I go change my image, rerun, we're good. Again, simple example, um, but confess really it doesn't care about the inputs. We support a lot of different inputs. So Docker file, XML, uh, JSON, YAML, uh, BCL, Hocon, Q. Uh, I can't even remember them all off, off the top of my head. There are a lot of inputs. If you've got a config file, we probably support it or someone's working on a parser for it. Let's see another quick example. Um, the serverless framework is sort of, again, a popular way of deploying cloud applications. Here I've got a serverless configuration file. Um, and it actually has a couple of problems. But let's see what Confess thinks they are. So Confess test again, file. Um, well, actually, in this case, we appear to have uh, prohibited the Python 2.7 runtime. Sounds sensible given it's out of date. We're also insisting people provide some tags and we can have a look at the policies there. Yeah, again, examples of Rego, like saying, well, if the runtime is Python 2.7, um, then uh, basically deny. Um, you can see here, we're, we're also able to build up uh, functions in Rego that can be reused across multiple uh, Things. We've even got a set of utility functions here, has field, has, uh, to make it easier to write policies. Rego is a, a language. It's just, it's, the, it's a logic programming language rather than a more familiar, maybe object oriented language. It's powerful and allows you to express really any arbitrary policy. Rego even has its own built-in unit testing framework. 
Um, so you can r write tests against those policies because you, you're always going to come up to that conversation of, well, yes, we've written a policy, but are there bugs in it? Well, now you can write tests for those policies to catch those bugs. Ensure you're testing your policies and then use your policies to test things. You've got that extra assurance. This is very much a, a software development tool. The documentation for Open Policy Agent and learning the Rego language is also really strong. Uh, you can go to openpolicyagent.org slash docs. You'll find a lot of wealth of examples, really, of using it for different use cases. I'm mainly here talking about using this for sort of policy and infrastructure as code related cases, but you can apply this to all sorts of other um, problems as well. Authorization is a great example. Open Policy Agent also provides the Rego Playground. This is an interactive web application. You don't have to download anything and you can just go and play around with the language. Um, this is also a great learning tool. Um, often in the community, when people have questions about how to do something in Rego, People can post it here and share an example, share a worked example with input data and showing the outputs. Um, it's a great way to get started if you prefer just to dive into trying something. Okay, so we've introduced Open Policy Agent and the Rego language, and we've talked a little bit about what we mean by policy. But how do we fit that really into a workflow? As we talked about, really, we can test any configuration file or structured data with this tool set. So, and when you start thinking about, I guess, the both the inputs um, and the outputs that are surrounding us as cloud engineers, you start to find lots of places to, to apply this. So maybe it's um, your Pulumi code, maybe it's as a resource manager, maybe it's varnish configurations or Docker files we just saw. We saw serverless configurations, but maybe you also have Envoy configurations or Circle CI configurations or Tekton. Like nearly all of the tooling we're deploying is configurable. And some of that configuration might just be somewhat arbitrary, but some of it you might want standardized policies around. Um, if, 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 you're, if it's in any of the supported formats or can be converted into those formats, you can use ConfTest to test it. Anything that outputs, or takes as input, structured data is fair game. I showed you as using ConfTest locally there, um, but we also provide a number of uh, CI CD integrations. So there are GitHub Actions, uh, Tekton uh, Tasks in the official Tekton uh, CD catalog. Um, there's also a, a community member wrote a ConfTest orb for Circle CI. Um, there's examples with uh, uh, GitLab CI as well, and lots of other, and as a DevOps, and really that long range of CI systems. Any of them are definitely, whether there's a first party integration or a community one, or it's just using the CLI or the Docker images provided, Confluence is easy to integrate into your CI CD system. If you're testing with any other tools, this should be easy to add in additional tests for your configuration. Let's take an example of that by looking at Pulumi. So as a lot of people will know attending this event, Pulumi is a infrastructure as code tool. Uh, you can write TypeScript, Python, Go or .NET, possibly other languages later, who knows, and use that to configure and stand up and manage cloud infrastructure. So here's a TypeScript example, uh, creating a small stack on EC2. But this applies to really any cloud, really any API driven infrastructure. This definitely sounds like the type of thing that would be useful to enforce policy around. Luckily, Pulumi has uh, CrossGuard, which also supports Open Policy Agent. You can actually write uh, uh, tests here in other languages. I'll focus on Open Policy Agent really because of the portability. We can use those same policies with Rego and with other tools. That provides a really interesting sort of portability story. But also we can even use those policies to maybe test things direct from the API. We've got a, a lot more reuse out of the same policies because we're applying them to a generic tool set. 
It's a really nice way of uh, Pulumi supporting something that's becoming widely used in other surrounding use cases. So let's write some policies for our Pulumi provider. Um, here, we're, again, we're back to a Kubernetes example, um, and we're, we're looking at metadata. We're wanting to say that all of our uh, Kubernetes applications should have the recommended, recommended labels. So we're setting a name, instance version, component, part of. All of these are now required based on this po uh, policy. You can see we define the set of labels, and then we deny things that not labels, that basically don't have those labels. And again, we're saying this must be a deployment. There's nothing specific to Pulumi here. This would apply exactly the same to a raw Kubernetes configuration file that you wrote yourself by hand, or one being output by another tool as well. Again, that's, that policy is portable. Pulumi has a built-in feature for us to apply that um, called policy packs. So Pulumi up, which would normally just actually just create that infrastructure by using dash dash policy pack and pointing at our, our policy folder. Again, that folder could be named anything. That's just the default that Contest happens to use. Um, before applying, we see here that actually it's run that policy and failed. This deployment obviously didn't have those recommended the label set. Um, and we've caught an error well before even in this case, touching an API, never mind actually provisioning that infrastructure. Pulumi also provides the ability in beta to output to uh, YAML files. So if you're, whichever the providers you're using, I know a few examples here with Python and TypeScript, like you might use it instead of talking to the APIs to output the files. In this case, you can use the same policy packs or you could just use Comtest against those outputted files. There's quite a lot of sort of like reuse and portability built into this tool chain. Let's see a quick demo of that. So here I have a, a small Python application um, and a bunch of this, uh, our policies. Let's have a look there. Um, this is the policy we saw before. It's enforcing the whether we have labels on our Kubernetes objects. Um, and we have our Pulumi code, um, in this case in Python, uh, creating a deployment. Um, again, you can pro if you're familiar with Pulumi, you'll see, well, I'm definitely not adding the relevant labels. I, I'm adding at nginx and that's all. So I can run Pulumi up, uh, policy pack, policy. Um, and again, we'll see it fail. Um, okay. Comfort is also useful for checking outputs. Um, so maybe you have uh, a lot of sort of files you're writing, but you probably also have tools that will output to structured data. So any tool that outputs to JSON or YAML or any of the other supported uh, tools is also fair game for applying policy to. We could look at um, kubectl as a good example here. kubectl is a tool that will allow you to output to JSON or any of the cloud provider CLIs, most of those will also, as well as give you a nice by default sort of human friendly view, they'll generally give you data behind the scenes. Um, I'm gonna be cheeky and show you an example using Sneak, but really this is applicable to any tool that gives you structured output. Um, so the Sneak container CLI allows you to test an image for vulnerabilities. Again, that's not specific to uh, any of this talk. Um, and it allows you to output that information, that list of vulnerabilities as a JSON document. Well, we can write policies against that as well. So here I'm saying that uh, let's get all of the vulnerabilities. Let's, and then let's say, well, for each of them, let's check that if the severity is high. Well, if, if there's a high severity vulnerability, let's basically, again, like fail the bill. Let's deny that. Uh, document from passing. Uh, we can also be a lot more specific. And this is, a, this is the real power of 
Rego and having a programming language that allows you to describe policy. We can get arbitrarily complex. Even these are simple examples to compared to some of them that you would be able to build after a little bit of experience of Rego. Like with any DSL, there's always a learning curve, but the simple things are reasonably straightforward once you get the model. Um, if you've ever done Prolog before, that's going to be easier or, or other lo logic programming languages. If not, try it for long enough that you get it and then try and build from there uh, is definitely the, the advice I would give. Here we're saying that, um, well, again, like get the list of it, get the individual issues, get the list of issues. Um, we're looking for identifiers of a CWE. CWEs are types of vulnerabilities. In this case, 327 is cryptographic issues. And so here is a policy that's saying, actually, well, fail on any high severity cryptographic issues, but also let's warn on any others. Uh, this is a new concept uh, that we haven't talked about up to now, where we, where as well as just denying and saying, nope, this is blocked, we can also warn. Uh, this is a complex idea that really like allows you to build a sort of nuanced UI for users. So here uh, is an example of something I mentioned before but didn't show of using ConfTest to take a document on standard in. So anything that outputs JSON um, or, or any other structured document format can just be piped straight into ConfTest. Uh, in this case, we run ConfTest test, uh, the dash saying for uh, standard in, and we get the output. So as well as thinking about writing policies for, again, like, documents you might write, think about outputs. It's a very flexible tool set in that sense. So we've now introduced what policy is, and we've shown some examples of how you might fit that into a workflow. Um, but they were generally sort of local or even in CI. But you might have lots of projects, lots of teams, and policy is definitely one of those things that often spans those types of organizations. It's often global even um, policy. Maybe it's to do with a specific regulatory regime or company-wide rules. So sharing becomes really fundamental to adopting policy at scale. So how can you reuse the things you write? The good news is we've built tools into ConfTest to really sort of help facilitate that. Uh, Confess supports uh, downloading policies from a number of different uh, sort of remote services. So you can download it directly just from Git, um, including downloading individual folders as, as shown in an example here. Um, you can download just from an HTTP server. So if you want to, if you have a file store somewhere or anything that's downloading, that, uh, allowing you to upload files and directories over HTTP, um, or it natively supports S3 as well. Um, so you can very easily pull down policies from different places. If you want everything into a Git repository, that will work. If you want to have releases somewhere and package them up, that will work too. We also support for that workflow um, OCI images. Um, so if you have a container registry um, or you're using one of the like globally distributed uh, container registries from the cloud providers, you can generally pull uh, uh, store policies there and pull them down using ConfTest. Uh, ConfTest also supports pushing policies there. That packages up the OPA bundle, which is how uh, policies are shared. Uh, and it adds a bunch of metadata that means the registries can index and store that correctly. Uh, this is all powered by the new OCI artifact specification that opens up registries to sharing really any arbitrary content, but in a structured way. Um, uh, Open Policy Agent and ConfTest were one of the first implementers of that um, on the client side. Um, and increasingly, a lot of the registries are starting to support that. This is really opening up um, a sort of like being able to reuse how we share container images for other tooling. In this case, Open Policy Agent, definitely worth checking out. Um, and last but not least, uh, Pulumi itself has a sharing mechanism built in, really scoped to organizations. So the 
example we showed before where I could specify the policy locally, maybe it's not up to me. Maybe it's up to a, a central security team about which policies I need to adhere to. And if I can skip out of those by simply pointing that at a different directory or not doing dash dash policy path, that's not good. So with Pulumi, we can do uh, Pulumi policy publish. That will publish things centrally. Uh, we can then uh, Pulumi policy enable that policy, and that will affect all runs of Pulumi up, whether they're running with policy pack or not, um, centrally. You can't work around that then. So a built into the Pulumi service is a, a useful tool for sharing Pulumi based policies uh, using Open Policy Agent. Okay, so rounding up, like if all you take away from this, I guess, is like configuration needs tests too. We write a lot of configuration, we write a lot of infrastructure as code, and it definitely benefits from everything we've learned from software development. And that's not just down to testing and in this case, using sort of policies. It's true of other so the other aspects of software development as well. So introducing CI, thinking about refactoring, thinking about code quality and repetition like, and refactoring. Uh, but definitely like adding tests into your configuration and your infrastructure as code like, helps you go faster by making you safer. Um, Looking at OPA specifically as an approach to solving some of those problems, I think it's useful to think about the fact that that's useful for lots of different cases. Lots of tools historically have come with a testing approach. They've come with built-in testing tools or community-provided ones. But then when you move to a different tool, it's a different testing tool. Um, and the reality on the ground for most cloud environments is you're not just using one tool. You're using all of them. Um, OPA opens up that idea that maybe we can standardize in a different way. The policies we write can be portable between different tools that are, are doing the same thing. Again, that could be a huge time saver later, as well as making it easier to move between different tools and lowering the cost of adoption. Ultimately, conversations around policy have generally been in meeting rooms and with documents. And really the implementation of that has been left as a separate thing later to maybe never happen. I think policy needs to shift left. We need that conversation about policy to be part of what we talk about as engineers, building cloud environments or ultimately building applications. Thank you for listening. Um, if you did like this talk, do feel free to sign up for Sneak um, for free over at, at sneak.io slash sign up. Um, and if you do have any questions about this, I'm Gareth R. pretty much everywhere on the internet. Thanks for listening.